goals would be the uh, main uh, purpose. What are you what are you attempting to achieve? OK, and then your objectives are how you reach that goal. OK, um, let's see here. Let's get into it. And I have added to the acronymous uh, key, uh, this acronymous uh, kind of concept with SMART being specific, M being measurable, A attainable and achievable, R being relevant, and T being timely. I have added E and R. I am a firm proponent, and this is trademarked work, <laughs> um, uh, that they should be smarter. Your goals should be smarter. The final E and R, we'll get into that as we um, first handle these, okay? Here we go. Specific. So we know what that word means, but you, you need to answer questions like, what do you want to achieve? Who needs to be involved to accomplish this goal? Uh, when do you want to have your goal finished? Why should you achieve this goal exactly? It gives you your why, if you will. Um, you know, sometimes we, we set out to do things and we don't really have a clear vision or a clear mission. Uh, this is part of that, uh, the specifying, the specification. And this is my why, okay? And uh, then you go to M, measurable. How can you measure progress and know if you successfully met your goal? Uh, the measurability of any goal should be inherent in your objectives as well. So it works both ways. So you'll have top level um, progress measured uh, by, of course, completing that specific goal. But then uh, as you go through your objectives, um, like, for instance, uh, there are about three or four steps in the process of obtaining a charitable solicitation license uh, for a nonprofit. OK, first, you know, uh, sign up for a user account with the North Carolina Secretary of State. Second, research uh, charitable solicitation licensure. You know me, I would add, and I would hope that you would add, number three, read North Carolina Journal Statutes chapter that relates to the, the excuse me, the Charitable Solicitation Act. Number four, uh, download forms uh, relevant to uh, the license application. Number five, submit application, something to that effect, okay? And in checking those off, you are measuring your progress. And when you get to the final one, which it should be uh, the submitting of the application itself, you know, once you get that returned and it is approved, that is measured. That goal has been achieved. You have made progress. You are now legitimately organized as a nonprofit and can legitimately uh, pursue solicitation of monetary contributions without there being any type of criminal or civil liability. All right. So A, attainable or achievable. Are you capable of achieving the goal? Do you have the needed skills? If you haven't, how can you build them? A lot of this we kind of um, touched upon with regards to uh, determining your line of business, um, if you remember. Uh, so determining whether or not they're achievable can oftentimes keep you from uh, reaching toward goals that may take uh, uh, greater work that you, than you set out to do. Or that can be uh, the part of your um, operations that maybe you can outsource to a third party. For, for instance, uh, the animation that I intend to uh, have as part of my advertising this year, I am not an animator. And when looking into the scope of that work, uh, yes, I may be talented in so many different ways, but that is just not my gift. And so that would be something I would outsource because it's not really achievable for me. It really isn't. And um, can I build that skill set? Yeah, but is is it going to be, we're going to go down to time? Is it going to be time? Um you know, uh, is it going to be smart time wise? Is it going to take too much away from me focusing on the things that I do excel at and I can get done very quickly? 
Um, is it worth me, you know, trying to undertake this new skill and um, do the work myself? Maybe next year, if I don't find an animator, um, depending on just my, you know, my individual strategic implementation plan for mayor um, and for the expansion of my business, maybe it's not appropriate right now. And maybe it will be something that you can add um, in the future. Keep in mind, you can have many innumerable strategic implementation plans. Um, I do. I have a SIP for um, nearly every high level goal that I want to achieve. Okay. All right. So then you go to R, uh, relevant. Um, is the goal worthwhile and will it meet your, your needs? Is each goal consistent with the other goals you have in, excuse me, established and fits with your immediate and long-term plans? Uh, and this is what we were kind of touching upon as well. Um, why would you undertake anything that is a waste of your time? Uh, and a waste of your time is also that which is not relevant. Um, you need to make sure that also uh, this relevance comes into play with uh, the scope and the branding and identity of your business. So if you are a mechanic shop, uh, oftentimes, uh, when we excel at maybe doing two things, some individuals have great difficulty uh, finding ways to cross market those lines of business. And it becomes this display of uh, lack of relevance. Um, so they're, you know, maybe they're a barber and they're a mechanic and they start advertising, you know, uh, uh, the mechanic services alongside of their barber services. I'm a firm proponent against that. Even though I am um, holistically for cross-marketing, it needs to be relevant cross-marketing. Just like you need to have relevant goals. Um, and people want to, they want to get at you in the regard that they have interests. So they may not be interested in your barber services, but they may be interested in your mechanic services and vice versa. And if you give inundate them with way too much information, especially the information that's just kind of conflicting, it's like, okay, well, what do you do? And then it's like, oh, they just kind of lose interest. Everybody does that. Even me, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, okay, you have a restaurant and then you say, okay, you have the mechanic shop. You have to... You have to advertise those separately. You have to organize your SMART goals separately for those avenues or those lines of business um, and ensure that there is relevance um, as you proceed with your goals um, and, uh, and reach toward your market base, okay? T, timely. We all know what that means. We need to make sure it is timely. Um, Oftentimes, I am working with uh, individuals who have done fairly well with their businesses. However, they fail where uh, time is concerned. Um, they're investing way too much time. They're spending 12 to 14 hours in their business on a daily basis. Um, that is not sustainable. Um, it's not sustainable for holistic health. It's not sustainable if your business requires that much time of you. Maybe that time is away from actually um, growing your business. Um, and that can be, uh, that can definitely translate into stagnation in your business, if you're putting all of your time into operating your business, then you're going to have very little time to actually focus on growing and involving your business. Now, with the timely goal, of course, you want them to be timely. If you are a nonprofit and you wish to uh, begin uh, soliciting contributions and uh, you've begun on a calendar year, so here you are in January. It is not timely to set a goal of getting your charitable solicitation license six months later. Um, and it's not um, smart um, altogether um, to begin uh, uh, soliciting donations, monetary donations during this time. You need to timely set a goal. Two weeks and two weeks is, I mean, you know, for me, that's that's just way too much time when you're talking about um, very, very um, basal and simple task as uh, the application for your charitable solicitation license. But uh, 
you know, to each his own. I want you to be realistic. As it says, you know, you're going to be realistic and relevant. So 